Cause it's Friday night and I feel all right. Cause the party's here on the west side. That's right, we're here on Friday. Collider TV Talk. Grace Hancock's here. Sinead DeFreeze is here. We're lighting it up always, uh, every day, 11 a.m. PST. My name is Josh McCuga. I'm your host. If you never watch Collider TV Talk, where the fuck have you been? Sorry for <laughs> swearing. <laughs> That's what it's like here on a Friday. Uh, we are here for the next, oh, I don't know, 27 or so minutes, depending on how rowdy we get, depending Ooh. how many Shakespeare quotes are, uh, are made. <laughs> Grace, what is first on the docket? All right, so I know we're all super excited about this. Netflix announced yesterday that there's going to be, obviously, a season two of GLOW. Ten episodes, just like season one. And I think we can all agree, I don't think anybody disliked this show, am I right? No. You're right. <laughs> You're right. And, and moving right like along. Watching the first 20 minutes of it, we're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a hit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're so good. The, I mean, it, it's not a shocker that they that they renewed it for season two. No, no, no. The show was pretty much perfect. Uh, and uh, like I said, when we first reviewed it, it opened my eyes to the fact that you can make a, it's because it's not really a straight up comedy. There are very funny parts, but that you can make a dramedy 30 minutes. You yeah, can make sure. you, you can make great TV in 30 minutes. And thanks to streaming services, you can make it like 31, 32 minutes. So it's almost like close to the length of an hour long on a network, but on a streaming service. Yeah. And I just I fell in love with both our leading ladies in this show. I know. Alison Brie and what's the actress's name that plays? Betty Gilpin. Betty Gilpin. Good God. Yeah, she's great. Something special. Uh, but <laughs> yes. And I I don't know. I don't like wrestling, but this show made me be like I would maybe see. Watch I this. when I, the first time I and the first and only time, like I'm some kind of. But when I went to Monday Night Raw, I was like, "Oh, I get it. I totally get it." <laughs> and now I'm like a big fan. Really? Yeah. Like, I know. Mm, Weird. Interesting. Okay, Sinead, how you feeling? Um, I think it's great. Yeah. I think that this was not a shocker at all. Yeah. Could totally saw it coming. Um, but yeah, keep great make glow forever. Like this, <laughs> I feel like the show could go on. It's the type of show that they set up in such an awesome way because it honestly can go on for so many seasons. But here's the thing, in real life it only lasted for four seasons, so at least right. they know there is an out. Like there is right. a, cause this season ended with like their first big match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who knows how far along they'll fast forward. Cause I mean, Alison Brie is kind of a movie star or at least trending towards a movie star. Sure. So getting her for like five or six seasons may be difficult. It might be difficult. It would be really cool if the second season picks up and they are, like it's a few months forward, they're like established, and yeah. they're kind of like rocking the the women's wrestling scene right now. Because they're in that documentary, they blew up. They were like the first viral sensation yeah. before viral sensations were a viral sensation. Uh, and <laughs> and that documentary was amazing. So if they get to that point where they're you know two months in and they're getting famous and they're appearing on Donahue and Oprah. Oh yeah, I would love that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And then to see like the kind of demise of it all, because it's a weird story of like the demise of everything. I, I don't know. I, I mean, if it went five seasons, I'd be psyched about it. I think five seasons would kind of be perfect. Yeah. But we got two. Yeah, so. it would, at least two for sure. And I know we're all super pumped about it. I'll be tuning in. Yes. Um, and actually, we're going to have some of the those actors on the Schmodown coming yeah. up. I'm going to be talking to them post-interview in my sassy heel attitude. <laughs> so look forward to that. And if one more person tells me about kayfabe, first of all, I was just told what <laughs> kayfabe was today. <laughs> me too. Every kiss begins with kayfabe. And I'll tell you what else kayfabe is. It's stupid. What's next, Grace? <laughs> so next, I know I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes we have to get really serious on TV talk. Okay. Like when NBC is working with Seth Meyers to play in a reboot of the classic sitcom, The Munsters. But it's set in hipster Brooklyn. And that's a quote. The door's right there, Josh. <laughs> and uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be here on Monday at 11 a.m. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? I don't care. Um, I really could give, like... No, I couldn't give less of a shit, actually. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't care. I also am very unfamiliar with this. And oh, back, Josh Maguga. Uh, yeah, I just, I just don't care. Like, I, it's, I like the bug. it's like the poor man's um, yeah. Adams family. It's a poor man's Adams family. Me. It's just, it's weird. I don't know who was asking for it. Like, right. honestly, I don't think that maybe like a couple, like one or two people maybe have mentioned this in the last... <laughs> 10 years, years. Um, but but I really don't think anyone was asking for it so it's kind of random the thing that I would ask for more is if the if the dad from the Munsters I mean he played the judge in My Cousin Vinny I liked that movie <laughs> 
I don't know what, what like. Okay, first of all, there was a monster reboot in what 2012. Brian Fuller tried to do it. Yeah, it, aired and it, it didn't... as a Halloween special. Right. It went nowhere. It was absolutely terrible. Now Seth Meyers, who wants to set it in hipster Brooklyn, here here's an idea. <laughs> here, here's a cool idea. Let's take a niche subject like a family of monster people and put it in an even more niche place of hipster Brooklyn to a place of, that people don't like. If you're not a hipster in Brooklyn, you don't like hipster Brooklyn. And if you don't like mobster families, monster families, you don't want to see a monster family show. Let's put that all together and make the shittiest Sunday yogurt land could, could ever create. I'm going to put the kiwi on top of the chocolate ice cream and mix it in with like all the sprinkles and then throw it in the street and then eat it off of it. That is, this is terrible. This is, the monsters reboot is a, a worse idea. I haven't heard a worse idea in a long time that we've talked about. I'm sorry. I'm getting worked up today. I, re I loved everything. And I, I can't take you seriously because of this wonderful cleavage right behind your head during hey, that Rachel entire Lindsay. rant. It looks amazing. No, I agree. I mean, it's like you said, it's like two people were like, hey, that'd be cool. That's Remember it. that one show? It was just those two <laughs> people. Bring that back. Really? Yeah. Maybe. It was just those two people. So, Seth uh, Myers was like, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking heard it. Yeah, I don't get it. Doesn't make any so sense So if to you me. are one of those two people, tweet me and let me know what the hell you're on. NBC just gave us like... 10 million, what should we do? <laughs> Fucking monsters, man. It's totally monsters. And then a live action anime of, of uh, Mr. Chiyo's hot fries. That's what we should totally do. Watch it be like incredible. <laughs> yeah, if it's good. I know, and then we're all gonna have to like eat our own. Well, I'm yeah. like, uh, shit. But it should be like literally like the greatest thing ever. Yeah. It gets nominated for Emmys. We're like, fuck. If, ah. it, if, it, if it is good, I swear, to, if it is good, first of all, if it goes to series, right, I'll be shocked. But if it's good, I will legitimately watch The Conjuring on loop for 24 hours. I'll, I'll put that right out there. Oh, I'll my the Lord. I, I maybe I'll fall asleep during parts of it, but I will watch The Conjuring over and over again. If I've, this is I've good, watched The Conjuring with you. I, this is good. You bruised me yeah. a little bit. It was okay, intense. If this gets above 70 on Rotten Tomatoes, if it goes the series... <laughs> I will sit and watch The Conjuring for 24 straight hours. Now watch, there's going to be a huge petition, like, make the monsters. <laughs> I had to do it, didn't I? All right, what's <laughs> yeah, next? All right, and then next, you know, we touched on this a little bit yesterday that American crime story Katrina is going to be taking a creative pivot, and we found out yesterday that Sarah Paulson is going to be leading the cast as they are going to be adapting the book Five Days at Memorial by uh, Sherry Fink, which is some pretty heavy subject matter. They're the medical staff in New Orleans who eventually make the decision to euthanize critically ill patients because the hospital's been without power for a few Grandma? days. Grandma? So, <laughs> so, it's, it's, uh, it's, so it sounds like a comedy. Um, so it's, I think <laughs> Sarah Paulson is absolutely phenomenal in anything she puts her hands on. So I'm thrilled about this. What do you think? Well, Sarah Paulson's like FX's muse. She's yeah. amazing yeah. in OJ. She's my muse. Yeah, she she, American Horror Story. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's this doesn't read like a comedy. I know you were joking. It's like, in no, the five it sounds days post like Katrina in a hospital without it's power. Like it's just, I mean, like that's like I will be sobbing through this whole thing. I yeah. will watch it because I'm sure it'll be phenomenally done. But it sounds because like the show Treme, like we were talking about the show Treme covered all of all of New Orleans, the ja the music, the food, you know, the the real estate, the rebuild, all that kind of stuff. This is just one place. And one kind of a cool thing about Katrina, I have a I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of the people that were affected by Katrina in like in certain communities that that wanted their community kind of focused because I know a lot of this originally was supposed to focus on the the Ninth Ward right. and you know the, the the black community in New Orleans. You're basically just focusing more on one small on sect. The hospital. I don't know if it's going to have the same effect as it would have had it focused more on that. That's just, that's all. Yeah. What do you guys think? I don't know. I mean, it's tough because I I have faith that American Horror Story will always continue to do well, right? Yeah. Um, American Crime Story. American Crime Story, sorry. Oh, good. Will, uh, will continue to do well. Like, I do. I feel like they have set themselves up, and it's, it's perfect. They have people on board. And I, I totally believe it. It is, to me, also, I just, I don't, I mean, I love the idea of Katrina and covering Katrina, I just I get a little a little uncomfortable when it is so polarizing. Recent. Yeah, not like it is because it's recent and like these kinds of shows are really really produced. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, like they I, I believe that they stay true to it as best as they possibly can. But it just it's just a little weird to me. Like there's okay. something about it that like has always kind of 
just triggered a little thing like, ah, is this is this right? Like, okay. is this something it's, we no, should? No, it's a good point. Like, are you saying like to like kind of like use a tragedy right. to like and it's make like, something? I don't, and yeah. The reason why I go so back and forth on it is because I don't believe that the people behind this have that intention. Like, sure. I believe that they truly do care about what happened, and you know. But we we live in California. Only the people that are from New Orleans know the extent of how bad it is. Right. We've all, I've, we've seen it. Yeah. We've been, I mean, some of us have been to New Orleans. I've been in New Orleans like four times right. since and Katrina. You, when and you, you go there it. and you're just like, oh my God, like it is 2017 and this place still needs so much work uh -huh. and so much help. And, but I truly believe that only the people who live there and breathe that life every single day and have been, have had to leave or lost family or lost friends truly understand how how terrible that time was. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just a little bit weird that it's now like such a scripted thing and it's just seems a little bit right, but like I could be being a square. Like maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I, no, I, I, I kind of like way. your angle. I honestly do. And I, and I can totally see it. I think it's a very good point, which is why I wasn't super excited when they said Katrina was going to be the next one. I, I want like a murder or something kind of famous. Katrina, again, like you said, it's a tragedy on such an um, epic Right, escape. Mm -hmm. and it's not really and history it's yet. So, you know? yeah, it's so fresh. Yeah. I, it's, it's too, it's it too really fresh. Is. Yeah. It's, it is not too even soon. I think. The way I look at it is like, yeah, all this money to make this awesome show. How about we put some money into freaking New Orleans? Yeah, I know. I yeah, I thought of that. I think that's what well, it is. You know, that, when they like, do production down there, you're giving people a lot of jobs. You're bringing money. Totally, to the city. totally. But there is, a, I, I but get there's something saying. to be said. For yeah. That, yeah, I think too. All right, what's next? Um, well, now we're going to take it in a little bit of a lighter direction. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hand this over to you, beautiful people, <laughs> and let's talk about this bachelorette debacle. Beautiful person. I'm just a dude with a beard. Oh, um, so this beautiful lady yes. in this furry You're beautiful. guy. Oh, thanks, Sinead. This You're was more beautiful <laughs> than Brian. I will yes! give you that. <laughs> Boom! Take that, Brian. <laughs> Woo! Spoiler, Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Brian can uh, Bri okay. suck my big toe. <laughs> Uh, this past Monday was a very difficult day in the DeFries household. First of all, uh, I got home and Josh texted me and almost ruined the show. And I was like, uh, please SDFU. I literally just walked in the door. I will text you when I'm done. Well, you know what happened was we're watching it, right? And Eric didn't get a fantasy suite, correct? He did last week. He got a fantasy suite last he week? He did last week. I even did asked I my sister. That? I asked my sister. I said, wait. I said, this is what Josh was texting me about. Where is Eric's fantasy suite date? And she's like, he got it at the end of last week. And I was like, oh, But yeah. did he? Like, there was, what? I don't. They never, ever went into detail about it. Right. Yeah. This, to me, The Bachelorette has been phoning it in for the past three episodes. Yeah, Literally, totally. Literally, details being skipping over, everything. You know why? You know why? I truly believe that the producers of this show were just as over Rachel Lindsay oh, yeah. as as America is at this time. For sure. There are literally a tiny, teeny, tiny amount of people that care. who still care about her. And that sucks because I was so all for them. Me too. I'm like, you are making records. She was, wait, she was a what hype. changed? Like, why did she lose she favor? She has never, ever, ever up until this finale seemed so fake. And it was such a shock, and I think that's why people are so pissed. She wanted Peter. She, she wanted was so Peter. in love with Peter. All so. she wanted was from the very beginning. The very, we were both like, Peter's going to win. Peter. They were seriously, like, right there the whole time. Then she tells him she has to have her proposal. She, she wants has proposal. to. And let me, let on me, TV. Like, it has to happen on the show. She refuses to continue to date him. What? Even though they've been on... Three dates. <laughs> Three dates. And let me say this, too. In, in Peter, in her defense, also in this, okay, in Bachelorette, whatever, I agree with you. Th uh, proposing after three weeks, that's what people that are on drugs do. The, in this one, I, if you're going on the Bachelorette and the girl wants a proposal, bro, do you know what you signed up for? Right, I'm sorry. I know. Get off Instagram, stop working out shirtless with a beanie on, yeah. and propose, and then a couple, oh, uh, my value system is so much so that if I propose once, it's forever. Dude, you're on the fucking bachelorette. I like, just, just do it. I just, I know, I totally agree with you, because I feel like that you know how this show works. Which yes. just makes me feel more and more that, you know, he didn't actually... He was struggling because he knew he liked her and he was confused, but maybe that was a good thing. Maybe it was a blessing disguise for him because I feel like if he truly, 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 truly was ready for her or like loved her or whatever, then he would have proposed to her. 100%. So I maybe, maybe he didn't love her as much as he, as much as he thought or that he did. he and, and, for, and the rest of, the, of what America saw was a girl who was in it for the totally the wrong reasons. Like yeah. she, the first couple episodes, I thought she was great. I thought she was kind of a sweetheart. She yeah. was very, very original, very organic. 
the, these last few episodes, she's like, uh, uh, I just feel like when I'm with him, I do that. When I, it was fake. It was <laughs> yeah. just fake. And like, it was 100%. The worst, the worst part about all of this is like the fakery and like the 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 bitchiness continued into the reunion yeah. when she basically told Peter like, you are not cut out for this 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 show like you're not clearly cut out for this process which Ooh. is her way of being like do not make him the bachelor because i will be so like unbelievably jealous to proposes. watch him yeah to watch him do this process and let it work with somebody else because she is clearly in love with him. And clearly what Peter is doing by not proposing is make me the next bachelor to see if another woman can sweep me off i can be swept off my feet oh, yeah. by another woman to propose to her. Right. That's it. Right. It's, oh, it was a total cold. He has cold. a producer. They all have their own producer. Of course they do. His producer's like, dude, it is audition time. Yes. Turn yes. it on. Let's go. Like he already knew right then at the beginning of like three three episodes ago, you could tell he was not gonna propose no. to her. Like it was so plain and simple, he was not gonna propose. So now they did a really great job, which is why I honestly feel like he might become the bachelor because it was so skewed towards Peter. Yeah. Like he looked like the golden child out of everything, no right? Shit. And then once he left, it was so fast. It was like Brian Done. picks out a ring, they go there. It was they didn't so even show the diamond guy. Mm -mm. He go they go to him and they're like, she's like, Oh, it's you. And he's like, Oh my god, I'm so excited. Let me propose. And everybody's like, This is what second place looks like. Right. This is legitimately you're in the Olympics. The guy who ran the hundred meter faster was maybe on steroids, so you got the gold. But you still know at the end of the day, <laughs> even if he wasn't on steroids, you still would have lost the race. Right. And that's what happened. Mr. Botox from Miami over here won it and it yeah. was it was such a like we watched the whole thing and if we didn't have a fantasy draft and it wasn't like a couples thing and it was fun i'd have been like why did i just waste the whole season it was it's, a fucking yeah, waste it was i mean what a, do you mean they look so in love in this photo i don't know like, what you guys are talking about it's like yeah. why is he holding my also, hand also they're the first like, couple to not go on jimmy kimmel ever and you yes. know why because jimmy kimmel can't fucking stand them either no. and it was so great after when he talked Burn. about it it was so, it was amazing the way that he Destroyed. recapped it yeah. and was just like this is an absolute tragedy. He was yeah. like, I can't believe Debacle. I just watched this. Debacle. This is insane. They, she went for the guy. She went for the ring over the over love, and it was so obvious to every single person watching. All she wanted was to get proposed because yeah. that's what she felt like she needed to do. Which I don't blame you, girl. I get it. You want to get proposed, but seriously, like, go with your heart. As much as it sucks, as much as it sucks to not get proposed to, who are you? And we're losing out. The other thing we're not getting to is that the casting process is a sham. Yeah, it's terrible. They are not bringing in good people. And listen, if you're out there watching, like I can't believe they're talking this much about the Bachelor. It 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 is funny to talk about because the idiocy that goes on on right. this show is like whatever. Regardless, it's a debacle. If the, it, if How long do you guys give these two then? What's your bet? Oh God, three months, three maybe months? five. Sinead? Yeah. I mean, they stay together for a little while, but it's, yeah, it's not going to be long. We were um, talking a winter wedding in 2045 right, yeah. with other people. <laughs> it's it's not, I don't think it's going to last very long. Honestly. I just, I don't think so. I, like they don't even go together. Do he I could care? be a really nice guy. He yeah. could be, I do believe she's a nice person. I just don't think that these two people will match. Um, really quick before I move on yeah. the, so like the, for the next bachelors, I do truly believe that they will end up making Peter the bachelor. Really? Um, but I do, I did hear through the secret grapevines of uh, the business uh -huh. <laughs> that Ben Higgins has also signed a contract to uh. reprise. Yeah, be the bachelor again. <sighs> so it it's not like set in stone, but I have heard that he like the his contract that he signed does allow like an option for them to use him if necessary. Because Lauren's uh, the worst. Well, apparently, like <laughs> all of America, like that season got like the highest ratings. Oh, I know. He was just like the lovable Ben Higgins, yeah. you know? Oh God, he was so vanilla with like vanilla I know. on top Goodness. with like but a I, dash I think of vanilla. I think he's super cute, but like. Better right, be Peter. Let's move on to everybody's favorite topic, which is the synopsis. The synopsis. Shindade of Thrones. Look at her on her. Oh dragon. my god, I love all these Look graphics at your dragon. so much. Yes. Blowing people up with dragon flames, Jacaris. <laughs> I right, love Shane. it. I love it. I'm Break like, it I have half on paper and half on because towards the end, I was writing so fast. <laughs> I was like looking at it, I was like, the fuck did I write? <laughs> so I was trying to um, whatchamacallit. So just bear with me, okay? Got it, got it. All right. We begin with Circe's brother lover. 
He's mad because <laughs> he worked really hard to earn a bunch of gold, and now he has to give some of it away. Circe's got a lot of maps. She's plotting as per Cersei. usual. <laughs> Did maps. I say that wrong? What's her name? Circe. But I You're love great. Cersei. Like You're great. You never good. stop. Me too. Cersei. I'm a big fan of Circe. She's got a lot of maps, and she's plotting as per usual. Stark Jr. got a new wheelchair, and he really hates <laughs> redhead bitch's shady life coach. He's just really got a lot going on right now, trying to figure out who he is in this fucked up world. <laughs> or he's just not a fan of the used dagger this dude just gave him. <laughs> Maisie Williams is home, but these two jabronis don't know who the fuck she is. They also don't know she's a fucking boss. She don't need no man. She finds her sis all on her own, and she's like, do I have to call you a lady now? And redhead bitch is like, yeah. And Maisie's like, okay. And then they hug. <laughs> Maisie gets to see her brother who's talking to a tree and he tells her he's like psychic and then he gives her a welcome home present that used dagger that he's been dying to get rid of. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jon Snow is getting all romantic in a cave with Daenerys but then they're rudely interrupted to talk about this damn war again. Danny needs some advice from Jon and he's like, don't ask me, bitch. But then he tells her to be different and she likes that answer. <laughs> Everybody just realized Maisie is a fucking boss but redhead bitch is upset again. Jon and his bodyguard are, talk are taking a walk and the bodyguard is like, so, dude, tell me about your date. But then they're interrupted again because apparently nobody understands how privacy works on this show. The brother lover is hanging with his friends when they realize some shit is about to go down. <laughs> What's that weird noise? Is the internet dialing up? No, it's a fucking dragon with the Daenerys attached to it and Ooh. homies are about to shit a brick. That guy literally just questioned why the fuck he signed up for this job. The dragon, whose name is Dragon apparently, is also bulletproof, <laughs> which is so important because it's a full-on war. An absolute fucking shit show. <laughs> to the page. <laughs> Heads are oh, flying. Peter Dinklage is like, I should probably go check on them. Remember when I said Dragon, the dragon is bulletproof? I lied. Now the brother lover has decided he's going to take matters into his own hands. He has decided to kill Daenerys. And he is so close. And then Peter Dinklage is like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. You're about to die. But no, somebody, a mystery somebody, saves him and throws him into the ocean. It looks like he's dead, but he's probably not. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> the synopsis, Sinead of Thrones. Really well done. I mean, come on, Sinead. It doesn't get much better. It's just too many details, you know? It's a just, lot like, of details. Like, I can't get, like, all the details. I will say, but you're, you're episode. inside. You, you kind of... You're almost like doing a freestyle rap of Game of Thrones, and I fucking love it. <laughs> it's like it. a poetry slam. It really it's a poetry slam. That's what you just did. It's amazing. Thanks really guys. good work. Sinead. <laughs> All right, let's move on. What's next? And now we're going to head back to this lady for the freestyle. Do, 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 do freestyle. Do, 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 do freestyle. I really love that logo. The freestyle snowboarding. The freestyle skateboarding. Right. Go, sorry. What were we talking about again? Something about animation? Yeah, I was. I wanted to bring up because <laughs> you asked me what we should freestyle I was like, hey, about. Hey, Josh, uh, what, what, what's, what are we doing? With this? <laughs> it's your to freestyle, but I wanted to give it to you because uh, yesterday I mentioned that I really like certain kind of animation and I don't really like anime because it's too much like a kid thing for me. And some dude came at me on Twitter being like, dude, you know what you're talking about? There's more adult themes Ooh, in anime. That than in actual thing. And I was like, well, basically what I'm saying is that I really like animation that is humorous, like a family guy, yeah. like BoJack Horseman, like Simpsons and that kind of stuff. Not anime or like the Castlevania thing. I can't take that like slow walking animation and the mouse just going like this. Like it just, it doesn't do it for me. I was wondering for to freestyle, if you could go on, cause you still like kind of are a little tapped into like a Nickelodeon Disney world of mm -hmm. a previous generation, but also like animation world. Say a DuckTales, like I f I'll watch maybe Wee the first episode, but I'm not gonna watch the whole series. Cause I don't really, it's a kid show. Yeah. Where where does it cut off? What's the cutoff? Cause you're at like you're sort of an adult at this point. Right. Um, sort of. Yeah. Um, but you also have a little brother. Right. So yeah, it's tough because I feel like I'm a little bit of a different case when it comes to things like that because I watched kids shows for way longer than most of my friends were. Okay. I don't know if it's because I'm, I'm 10 years older than my younger brother, so when I was 13, 14, he was three and four, uh -huh. and starting to get into like that Disney world and Are the you Nickelodeon the middle? Is Kel Duck Coe older than you? Kel Duck older than me. Okay. I'm the middle, and then our little brother, he's 15 now. So, um, yeah, I definitely watch the most cartoons and, like, animated shows out of, out of my siblings. My little brother is obsessed with anime now. Okay. So, because of that, right, and I'm 
pretty much the only other nerd in our family. Mm -hmm. He comes to me a lot and gets me more intrigued. So it's a little bit different for me because I feel like if he wasn't around, maybe I wouldn't be watching as much um, of the younger shows now. I'd be watching shows that are more skewed towards adults. Okay. Um, but do you think it's something in my brain that when I see certain kinds of animation that it just like I can't? It is one hundred percent. It is a it's it's a it's a part of your brain that is like way more sophisticated than that part of my brain. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Which right. I'm like totally all right with. I don't have a very sophisticated sense yeah. or a sophisticated taste when it comes to television and movies. Like I, I appreciate sophisticated movies, but I also appreciate the the very younger, okay. cheesy, plotless shows too. Yeah, well, because right? you watch that dance show that I couldn't get past the pilot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, there's something about certain shows and movies, and where I'm just like, this is so easy to watch. I always say that. Remember, okay. I love yes. easy shows. Yes. There's something about that that makes me so happy. Like the type of show you can put on in the background. But um, yeah, so he, I've always watched Family Guy. It's been my it's been my bread and butter. Sure. I've never gotten into The Simpsons, and I've never gotten into um, um, South Park. But you love BoJack Horseman, and you were love the one that turned me on to BoJack Horseman. And but that it's also amazing. that very like, that's very like that dry sense of humor. It's mm-hmm. not over the top to me. South Park has always been like too over the top. And people always think I'm crazy. They always say like, it's the most intelligent show. And I believe it. I believe it's smart, whatever. But it is so, I can't listen to it. Okay. Like, it just, it it makes me want to ram my head into the wall. Gotcha. Yeah, just, it's grating. It, it, yeah, it's just a lot. And it's, and like, yeah, I have a potty mouth, sure. But that is next level. Like I walk into the room sometimes and my brother's watching it and I'm like, turn it off. Like, cause it upsets me to yeah. my very being that okay. my 15 year old brother is sitting there listening to like vagina, dick, penis, and like right. all this stuff, you know? And like, F this, F this, it, it's just gross. Yeah. But yeah, I think it is some, I think it is an adult thing. Like my parents do would be like, I can't, like they can't watch that. I can like sit there and probably watch most cartoons and I can still watch all of my favorite 90 shows. Okay. Sinead DeFries. DeFries style. I just wanted a little bit Mic of drop. like maybe just a little comfort or mm-hmm. something in the mix to be like, I, I, again, there's nothing against anything like that. I just, for me to get into something animated, it has to have some sort of an adult theme that, is, that applies to my life. It's like a relatability thing. That's why. Correct. Like if maybe if those younger shows, you'd probably still laugh if they made a joke that was, you know, and that's, that's probably why I can still watch 90s shows because in the 90s, a lot of that humor was geared towards um, older. Yeah, old, it older, just went over your head. Yeah, when just you, were you didn't understand it. Correct. But like there, I did this great video on Clever. It's like like seventeen references that you never realized. <laughs> yeah, were and then you grow yeah. up and you're like, Ugh. it's so true. But nowadays they make it a lot. They make it a lot different. So yeah. I, I don't really watch as much now as I did back then because I got it. Like I relate yeah. to it. Now you watch stuff, you'd be like, what are they talking about? Right. You know, that younger right. generation, they're crazy. I hear you. All right. <laughs> Preach. Let's move on, Grace. Um, so we're going to do a quick Twitter question from sure. my man Nick at True Man of Steel underscore. <laughs> T-O-S. At Mrs. Grace Face, what's T-O-S. a Netflix show that you watched that you wish you hadn't? For me, it's season four of Arrested Development. I have my answer. Josh, what's yours? I wouldn't say season four of Arrested Development. I actually kind of enjoyed that more than most of like the Die Hard uh, thing. But uh, I think by far the Netflix show that I kind of wished I hadn't watched was that Castlevania show everybody told me to watch. Mm. It's like I, I haven't, yeah. It was like, I, I don't it just didn't look, again it was like an anime style and I couldn't really get into it uh, but yeah 100% that, that show Jeanette. I didn't hate that show but it was kind of like eh. um, I don't know if there's anything I totally regret watching like all together I will I do regret binging all of Iron Fist in a day <laughs> <laughs> like I do yeah. regret that that was the most difficult day of like my life on this show the one show I say I thought I was going to regret watching but I didn't and like after the pilot I was like oh my god this is the weirdest creepiest show is Chewing Gum the one that you told me to watch the yeah, 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 I have, yeah. it's on my uh, it's, my watch list it's freaking hysterical it's hilarious it's amazing it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah I don't think I've ever regretted like I don't I mean I could watch the worst show ever but there's still something I'll, I will take away from it. I do hate. I do hate when I binge shows, and then I'm like, why'd I do that? I will take this yeah. back real quick. Haters back off. The um, the Miranda Sings show. I watched ten minutes of that show. Why and would I you almost, ever watch? I that? must cancel my subscription. Yeah, <laughs> See, I, I I watched a few a few too many episodes of The Ranch, starring Ashton oh, Kutcher. Oh my god! And uh, god. it's that it's like going strong. Isn't it's it? it's yeah, time I'll never get back from my life. The there dad hilarious. But it's the, Sam Elliott. But for it was Christ like I'm, I'm watching it and I'm like, why why are you doing this, Grace? I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know. So so yeah. And that's uh, that's all I got for all right. for Twitter today. Thanks guys for sending it in. We're gonna skip our pick of the day. We're running out of time before we get out of here. Sinead DeFries, where can the good people find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's Sinead.com. I will be back next Monday for, or not Monday, next Friday yeah. for another episode of TV Talk. Boom.
Grace Hancock. And I'm Grace Hancock. You can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. Josh McCuga, uh, at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube here every single day on Collider TV Talk, uh, 11 a.m. PST. If you're watching, we love you. If you're not, why not? We'll see you next time. Enjoy your weekend. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.